so today I am coming at you guys with a sit down video where we're going to talk about recovery and some things that you can do to optimize muscle gain in the long term. So I'm going to break this down into four components. First one is going to be food and nutrition. Second one is going to be sleep. Third one is going to be training frequency and intensity. And then the fourth one is just going to be kind of like some random um, or extra things you can do to, you know, just enhance the component of recovery. So let's jump right in with the first one. So the first thing I want to highlight is hydration. Now we know water has no nutrient value, but it is a huge driving factor in your training. You're just not gonna have the highest quality workouts if you're dehydrated. And I know a lot of people know this, but I know some don't. You are dehydrated by the time you're thirsty. So if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So that is why I stay on top of it by, I got it right next to me too, drinking a gallon a day. So for the average person, even if you're very active, um, most athletes, you wanna drink a minimum of a gallon that should do you about right. Some people, if you are extremely active or you live in an extremely hot climate or you have an extremely physically demanding job where you're sweating a lot, you might need a gallon and a half or two. Sometimes I feel like I need a gallon and a half. Sometimes I do drink a gallon and a half, but for the most part, I keep it at a gallon per day. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about food, specifically protein and carbs. So at a bare minimum to recover from your workouts, you're gonna to wanna to eat your body weight in grams of protein per day. Right now, I weigh 193, 194 pounds. A good, a good number for me to hit would be 195. But with me being a bodybuilder and trying to maximize my muscle game to the fullest potential, with being competitive with this, my protein is much higher. My, my protein is sitting in the 260s right now. I actually just listened to uh, a podcast by Justin Mahaley, the Grower Die podcast, that was talking about the significance of protein and that your body weight in grams, if you're a bodybuilder, is just not cutting it. You are leaving gains on the table. I don't have the science and the studies for you to show you or really explain it in depth, but everything he said made a lot of sense, and I'm glad that Alex has me eating so much protein right now. I, I think that, I think it's directly allowing me to gain more muscle than if I was even at my body weight in grams. But at minimum, you want your body weight in grams of protein. And another thing with protein, it is very satiating. So protein is gonna help you feel fuller throughout the day, which is a huge plus if you're in you know, a caloric deficit trying to cut. Um, but even when I'm bulking, like right now, I'm trying to stay lean. I'm not trying to get fat. I do still have those food cravings. Keeping my stomach full is still a uh, Something that's pretty important. Next thing I want to talk about is carbs. The carbs are your body's first energy source it goes to. So when you just deplete yourself in a workout, you're going to want to go ahead and fill back up on energy. You're going to want to go refuel your body. A great way to do that is getting a meal in post-workout with a lot of carbs. And then the last thing that I'm going to touch on in nutrition actually kind of goes with protein. You're going to want to eat meals in general, but high protein meals every two to three hours to optimize muscle protein synthesis. So basically your body goes through muscle protein synthesis every two to three or two to four hours in that time frame, And that is when your body is utilizing the protein that you're giving it and actually repairing the muscles that you broke down. And that is a huge, huge, huge thing. Um, and it, 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 I've really only come to like really break this down in my head over maybe the past couple years out of my seven years of training. You are damaging, tearing down your muscles when you are training. They are literally being damaged. You are tearing muscle fibers. You are only building muscle when you are repairing those torn down muscles by eating, by getting your proper nutrition in. You are not building muscle when you are in the gym. You are not. You are building muscle when you are repairing it through the foods you eat. So that is why it's so important to take advantage of muscle protein synthesis, especially if you are a bodybuilder trying to optimize every single component of the muscle building, the hypertrophy process. 
now we're gonna jump into sleep. So I actually have a very good firsthand example of this. You're gonna wanna get seven plus hours of sleep a night. So I will say yesterday, I had the most intense, savage, like just stupid, dumb workout. Extremely systemically fatiguing. My body was cooked afterwards. Driving home, my arm, dr the steering wheel, it wasn't going. I had to, I had to, I had to hit him with one of these. So I knew my CNS is done for right now. I needed sleep. I slept eight hours last night and probably could have slept at least two or three more. When you're somebody who trains hard as fuck and has extremely strenuous workouts, it's gonna be that much more important for you to get your sleep in. Um, sleep is a huge component that I think is probably the most uh, slept on, no pun intended. I didn't, I, I haven't started taking sleep seriously until now. And I'm getting to the point where I will sacrifice things I really, really would like to get done if it means I can get a little bit more sleep. And that is not, and, and, and that's something I struggle with. Being so driven and having literally, honestly, such a jam packed, busy day 90% of the time. I, I want to get my shit done just so I don't stress about it. But sleep is important when you were trying to build muscle. Your body needs to refuel, re energize itself. And with that, you need to make sure you're getting quality sleep, making sure you're getting an REM. Um, and then, so with that, this is kind of like a loop that feeds back into itself. If you have shitty sleep, you will more likely than not have shitty workouts. And, and caffeine should not make up for it. Caffeine should be viewed as a supplement. So the other day I woke up to work out. I was, I think on four hours of sleep. I was literally driving to the gym, said, there's no way right now that this workout is going to be at the intensity level that I want it to be. I took my ass home and went right to sleep. I slept another probably like three hours. Felt much better. Ended up having a good workout. But I just knew if I walked in that gym, my intensity level was not going to be where it needed to be for me to feel good about that workout and optimally perform. So now let's talk a little bit about training frequency and intensity. So as a rule of thumb, as a natural athlete, we do not want to train the same muscle groups intensely within the same 48 hour time frame. Your muscles need time to recover, time to repair themselves. I kind of struggle with this one a lot. I won't lie. And it's, it's, it's like a rationalization that I go through in my head. I'll hit arms, uh, biceps, triceps, shoulders one day, uh, maybe take a rest day, do legs or something. And then I will hit... Uh, back and biceps two days after I hit a heavy arm workout. Sometimes my biceps are still cooked from that arm day by the time I'm doing back and biceps. So I might lower the intensity a little bit on my biceps knowing that my biceps are not fully recovered. So next, I want to talk about something that has been, uh, it's a struggle for me recently. I'm getting to the point in my workouts where, and this happens a lot when I'm training with somebody else, um, it's because it takes more time to train with somebody else opposed by yourself. Once you start losing that pump, and not because you took a five minute rest or went to talk to somebody for 10 minutes, once you are going hard and you start losing that pump, that is a good signal to you that you should stop. You should not continue to push yourself. Your muscles are not immortal. Once you start losing that pump mid-workout, you are pushing your body what is beyond reasonable volume. And that is something that I've been struggling with. I'm not going to lie. There are at times where I will leave, I will leave a movement or a couple of sets on the table just because I know my body is taxed. And this comes with advanced training. It definitely does. Once you get to the point where you know your body, you know how training feels, you know how training feels with different states of your body. It's a lot more easy to judge, okay, am I being soft right now? Or have I maximized what I should be doing today? And I genuinely think I'm at the point where I can, I can walk out of the gym knowing, okay, I didn't do this movement, but I'm fucking cooked right now. So I know it's not because I didn't go hard. I, I, I work out. I, I have no issue with saying I work out extremely hard. I don't know anyone personally that works out harder than me. I know people that work out as hard as me, but I don't know anyone who works out harder than me. I think that ties into working smarter, not harder. Yes, we empty the tank in the gym, but with that, there is a ceiling, there is a wall that your muscles literally cannot take anymore.
All right, so now I just want to talk about a couple extra things, you know, just kind of miscellaneous to wrap up the video. So, one thing that I've found huge, especially on leg days, is stretching and walking on the treadmill post-workout. Leg days. If I do about a 10-minute cooldown after an intense leg training session, I feel significantly less sore the next day. And I think it's kind of the same concept when you roll out with a foam roller. Also, you want to stretch post-workout. It's It's really just to get that lactic acid out of your muscle it will reduce doms delayed onset muscle soreness which usually comes in about the 36 to 48 hour window especially for legs i don't know if everyone's like this but i have noticed my legs get the sorest between really like two and three days after i work them they're sorest on the second day all right and then massages same concept here but also just to release that tension and Sometimes you get knots when you go crazy hard for a prolonged period of time. So massages are a huge thing. I feel so much looser and just refreshed after I get a massage, especially if I've been training hard for like a month and haven't had one. I just feel like a brand new nigga when I get out the chair. All right, then next, I want to talk about limiting your physical activity when you are in your recovery time frame. So this one is a matter of balance. If you are trying to optimally gain muscle, should you go and play pick up basketball for three hours and go all out? Probably not. Can you go on a walk? Can you shoot around with your homeboy for 30, 45 minutes? Yes. You don't want to overtax, overstimulate, overstress the body, which at the end of the day is only going to result in increased cortisol, which will make your recovery that much less effective. And then the very last thing that I want to talk about that I actually don't personally implement into my training right now is ice baths. I know Chris Bumstead is huge on this and shit. Maybe one day I will start uh, regularly taking ice baths, maybe on leg days. I can see that happening. But ice baths are a great way to reduce inflammation and that is all for today's video i just wanted to bring you guys a quick sit down informative type style video you guys know i'm all about variety on this channel and i'm really excited to start bringing y'all like educational informative style content i just want to add diversity and um really start to like talk about the things that I'm starting to implement into my coaching. And I'm constantly listening to podcasts because I will be the first to admit that I'm very new to coaching, I'm very new to growing this business, and I have so much that I could learn. There's so many levels to this shit. But I will see you guys in the next video. If you like this one, hit the like button. Subscribe for more like this. Hit the notification bell so you get informed every time I upload. And I will see y'all in next week's video.